Hello and welcome to another installment of our Women in STEM series. My name is Kaylee Peel and I'm Manager of Strategic Partnerships for the Linda Hall Library. Today our guest is Pooja Shah from DNV. Pooja, thanks uh, for being here and welcome. Great to be here with you. So to begin our conversation, would you mind giving a little bit of background on your career trajectory and what led you to DNV? Sure. Uh, so I'm a senior consultant with uh, DNV's Power and Renewables Group right now. I work within the energy storage and emerging technologies advisory, mainly working on engineering uh, projects for uh, energy storage and renewable energy projects. I also do a lot of technical due diligence for electric vehicle charging infrastructure. The way I got here is has been kind of an interesting journey. Uh, it's been a huge learning curve for me. Mm -hmm. Growing up in India, I am not unfamiliar with extreme weather conditions and the impacts of climate change. And so uh, from my childhood, I was interested in uh, pursuing a, f a career in the clean energy sector and sustainability. Um, I spent the first five years uh, of my career working in the engineering and construction industry, working on solar and energy storage projects. And I recently joined DNV within my new role. That's amazing. So um, when you were starting to learn more about climate change and that you were interested in pursuing a career in that, were there any historical figures or people who were really inspiring you along the way? So as a kid, uh, there, I don't remember having a lot of conversations about climate change. Only recently have we started really focusing on the impacts of climate change and how um, climate change has uh, impacts on our day-to-day -day life. And so I don't remember having a lot of conversations about the people uh, who were working in the uh, climate and energy sector or what they were doing. But I do remember um, you know, gl being glued in front of the television to watch um, Kalpana Chawla's um, first space mission uh, in 1997. Um, and I think having someone who looked like me be on television really was a powerful moment for me and it really inspired me to pursue a career in STEM. Yeah, that makes total sense. I think, you know, we have a few career exploration tools and programs that we do, and it's important that young people see themselves in those roles, right? That's that's incredibly important. Representation matters. Um, historically, we know that, you know, women often have been overlooked when it comes to science, technology, and innovation, and those contributions to science. Um, what has been your personal experience as a woman and a woman of color in the Kansas City space here? Yeah, like I was saying, you know, we haven't really been talking about climate change for a really long time, but now we know that, uh, you know, Eunice Newton Foote um, in 1856, I think, I, <laughs> we'll <laughs> I should check. have stated her name, <laughs> Dane, um, but um, sh uh, she, uh, she had theorized a long time back, over 150 years back, that the carbon in the atmosphere was impacting uh, our atmosphere and it would lead to climate change. Um, but I found out about that only recently and now we have so much more data about you know, the impacts of climate change and how it disproportionately impacts women. Mm -hmm. And yet we often find women underrepresented in decision making roles and uh, problem solving roles when it comes to clean energy and climate change. And that's also been my experience in the industry. I have often found myself being the only woman in the room or the only person of color in the room. And that's been intimidating. <laughs> I think um, no, I think you, you completely nailed that, right? And, and it's interesting to me that climate change is so impactful to women and we're still not in the room. Um, and I hope to change that, right? And I think our community is definitely um, on that path. We are slowly seeing that change uh, over the last few years, mm -hmm. but it's not enough given the scale of the crisis and the pace at which we need to address this crisis in front of us right now. Absolutely. So how else can you know the greater STEM community here in Kansas City, but also on a more broad scale, you know, nationally, internationally, how can we better support women in marginalized groups to make a better um, collaborative and impactful ecosystem? There are three main things that I see that we need to do to increase representation of women uh, in STEM roles. I think the first thing is to start with growing the talent pipeline, so recruiting more women into STEM fields. And that you know, we know that uh, young girls are discouraged from pursuing STEM careers as early as middle school or high school, and we need to start changing that. I think that's the first step. 
The second step is retention of women who are already in STEM careers. Women face a lot of challenges every single day in STEM careers, being the only woman in the room or you know, other um, competing priorities which forces them to leave uh, STEM careers. We saw a lot of women drop out of the STEM force during the pandemic. So we need to be, uh, we need to create more inclusive atmospheres and workplaces where women can not only continue to uh, contribute to the work that is being done, but also thrive in that work and be able to provide their unique perspectives in those fields. And lastly, I would say that, you know, we need more women in leadership roles and you know, being able to promote more women into those roles, bring more women into those roles, uh, have them uh, at the tables where decisions are being made and you know significant contributions are happening and um, you know, that's where we need to have more women mm -hmm. as well so those are the three main things i would say that we need to do to encourage women to pursue stem careers and um, be be uh, be able to contribute to STEM careers. Yeah, and I think um, I think those are three great examples. Um, so thank you for sharing that. And I, I love hearing more about your insight. But you've also been a great leader in our community. C would you mind sharing some of the organizations and some of the things that you're a part of here? Yeah, absolutely. So the three things that I mentioned. Um, First was increasing the talent pipeline. I work closely with organizations like the Girl Scouts and Boys and Girls Club of uh, Greater Kansas City. Both of these organizations are doing amazing work in encouraging um, young um, men and women to pursue um, STEM careers. Um, in terms of uh, retention, uh, I, I work within DNV's different employee resource groups. So we have uh, a Hispanic resource group, we have a black uh, employee resource group, Asian American uh, employee resource group, as well as a women's, uh, women in power and renewable energy grids uh, resource group. So uh, I contribute to uh, that as part of committees and helping out uh, with uh, organizing events. And then lastly, promotion of women into decision-making roles. Um, I am part of United We's Kansas City Public Policy Coalition, and uh, United We does some amazing work in increasing representation of women in economic and civic engagement roles, and that's where decisions are being made, policies being shaped. And so being able to contribute to that has been um, very, uh, very gratifying to me. Absolutely. So, um, you know, something that I mentioned earlier, what the library does as far as public programming and career exploration tools, our Kansas City Invention Convention, and it's something, it's kind of connected to something that you uh, mentioned, which is building that pipeline, because the next generation is something that we need to focus on, too. Um, what would you, what is something that you would want a young person um, to know if you got to sit down with them and they were, you know, wanting to pursue a career in STEM, what would you say? There are a lot of great pieces of advice that I have received during my career and usually I try to uh, communicate the same pieces of advice um, that I have received to uh, young girls today who want to pursue a career in STEM. One of the first pieces of advice I would say is be willing to learn as many new things as possible. There are so many new challenges that we are facing today that we've never seen before and we need to be able to think creatively, think outside the box and bring our own unique perspectives to the conversation. And so being able to learn new things and be courageous enough to voice those different perspectives that we bring to the conversation is extremely important. So don't be afraid to do that. Uh, the second thing I would say is uh, STEM is hard. Be perseverant be willing to take those risks and don't be afraid of failure because we are doing new things we are bringing new perspectives into the conversation we are uh, because we are taking risks right now we are bound to fail and that shouldn't stop us from doing what we are doing it should just make us be more uh, courageous and continue to make those valuable contributions that's great advice. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And my last question, um, you know, the library, um, we're not only focused on the historical aspects of women in science, we really want to also celebrate current wins, which is why we're doing this um, interview series, um, but also, you know, um, work toward helping future 
women pioneers. Um, what do you think the future of women in STEM looks like, you know, not just from a local or regional scale, but nationally, internationally? So I think women continue to be underrepresented in uh, a lot of STEM roles and uh, in decision making roles in general. And I think in the future, we need to move towards equity mm -hmm. and have equal representation of women in important roles so that we can continue to bring those unique perspectives into the conversation and be able to move towards a just and equitable future. Well, thank you so much, Pooja, for being here. I appreciate your time. Thank you.